What is going on to all my movie fans out there? And welcome back to my channel, Movie Files. Elliot back again with a brand new early special movie review. And I say special because the film we're discussing today was a film that actually made my top 10 most anticipated movies list. Now, you can watch that video to see exactly where the film landed on that list. But let's just say it was pretty high up there. I'm so excited to be talking about Robert Eggers' The Northman, which I got the opportunity to check out early in theaters. And I'm so excited to share my thoughts with you all. Let you know if I think it's worth checking out and so much more all in this spoiler-free review. Before we get into it, make sure you're checking me out on all my other social media accounts. If you're new to the channel and love early movie reviews, TV breakdowns, and live streams, well come and join the community by subscribing and hitting that notification bell. And as you all can see on the screen now, if you enjoyed this early movie review, well make sure to give it a thumbs up and also share the review. But more importantly, in the comments, were you excited for The Northman? Did it make your top 10s list? But more importantly, once you've seen the movie, we got to discuss it in the comments from your pros, your cons, favorite moments, least favorite moments, your thoughts on the direction, the production, the performances, the Norse mythology. Did the film just not work for you? Let's talk about it all in the comments below. So for me personally, I love a Viking saga. I love a story about revenge. I'm a big fan of the director and the cast. Did it exceed my expectations, live up to my expectations, or come below that? Well, let's start off with my positive, starting off with the director and co-writer himself, Robert Eggers, who I'm a big fan of. And let's just put this in perspective. His first two films, The Witch and A24's uh, The Lighthouse, films that I enjoy, more so The Lighthouse than The Witch, but you take the production of those films. They're about $15 million. Now, he isn't working with A24 in this time. He's working with Focus Features. They gave my man $90 million, and it's his biggest film to date, and it's his most ambitious film to date. I love what Robert does with this film. His one-take shots, which were absolutely beautiful in this film to look at, especially during this particular scene where we have a Viking raid. He's so meticulous in crafting this film, and when it comes to the writing... This is a passion project. This is a, a project that has purpose, that has a clear vision, and he does not hold your hand in telling this Viking saga that's steeped in Norse mythology, and I really appreciate that. And speaking of appreciation, as a fan of his work, this is his best direction job to date. He did such a great job in directing this film and translate that to the production. The crew, in my personal opinion, they brought the most authentic Viking saga I have ever seen. The wardrobing, the weapons, the long ships, being on set, being in regards to on location, it goes a long way for me because you feel like you're in the trenches with these characters from the heavy rains, the hard winds, the mud. It just felt so authentic. You know, the lighting was impeccable there are so many shots in this film that are absolutely just like breathtaking to look at like it's pieces of art in this movie and then you talk about the score if you all know me you know I love a good score and I appreciate a good score and the score is so damn epic it felt so huge and grand and extraordinary and I I'm gonna say this two of some of my favorite films of all time if the Gladiator and Braveheart had a baby, it would be named The Northman. And that's very high praise because I love those two films. But speaking of high praise, let's talk about the performances, which everyone in this cast is phenomenal. Even though not everyone gets the same amount of screen time, they do the best they can with the limited screen time. I think of Ethan Hawke as the king and Willem Dafoe. They are fantastic. There's a scene very early on that takes place in a cave, which was just insane to see and very funny if I'm being honest. But let's talk about the standout. Starting off, who I consider to be like a once-in-a-lifetime generational actress. I'm talking about Anya Taylor-Joy as Anna, who really doesn't get involved until like the first act of the film, but when she is involved, she's fantastic. She is mostly around our main character, the prince, played by Alexander Skarsgård. She brings such a vulnerability. She brings hope to this role. There's a lot of darkness in this movie. She brings a lot of hope to her character. There's this warmth. There's this care. There's this nurturing nature to the character and the chemistry she has with Alex, I thought was fantastic. Ian Taylor Joy, she's just born to be on the big screen. And, and the collaboration she has with Robert Eggers, they're just so in sync. I thought she was fantastic. We got Nicole Kidman in this film, and I'm a big fan of her. She is a queen in her own right, and she's a queen in this film. And her character brings and adds so many different interesting dynamics with the relationships we get in this film, whether it's with Ethan Hawke, her new king, more importantly, her son. And speaking of her son, who's played by Alexander Skarsgård, for my fans out there for Big Little Lies, and we know they were married in this in that movie, in that show, and now they're, you know, a son and, and, a, and a mom, you thought that that 
that relationship in Big Little Lies was complex and toxic. Well, let's just say this is even more complex in their relationship. And I thought that Nicole Kidman was absolutely great in the role. But let's talk about the man who is responsible for the revenge tale. And that is Clay's Bang as Fior, the brother of the king. Now, I'm familiar with this work because I saw him in Dracula and I thought he was a great Dracula. But He's phenomenal in this film. What I loved about his performance, it's so complex. He's a complex character, and especially when it comes to the revenge angle in this film. And I don't want to give too much away, but I'll just say this. If you look at the film in his perspective, it changes the whole feel of the film, which I love that aspect. And I can't wait to revisit the film because, again, if you put yourself in his shoes as the brother that took the, the king and is now having his own kingdom... It makes you think differently about the film. And I really think that Clay's brought a big kind of, uh, you know, vulnerable side to this character. And I really enjoyed his performance. But I can't go without mentioning the star of this film. I'm talking about Alexander Skarsgård, who is the prince of the film, who's on this journey of revenge. And he goes by his name means... Bear Wolf. And oh my goodness, the physicality that Alex brings to the role is absolutely fantastic. I've seen a lot of his performances on TV and in films, you know, True Blood to Big Little Lies to many films that he's been in. This is his best work to date. The Again, I mentioned the physicality that it brings to the role and the commitment is completely unmatched. He carries himself in the film like he's like always like he's a big brooding guy. Like again, his name is Bear Wolf. You can see him carrying that trauma on his shoulders in this film, and you can totally can see him conveying that perfectly. He brings so much humanity to this role because, again, his character is considered a bear wolf. He is an animal. He is a weapon. He's a tool. But I think Alex brings such a humanity to this character. He brings vulnerability to the character, and there's so much depth to his character. He's not just someone that's just on this mission. I mean, he's told to be for his faith, for his destiny, to avenge his father's death, to save his mother, to kill Vilnir, but there's just so much more that Alex brings to this role, and I thought that, again, this is his best work to date. I thought he was absolutely fantastic in his role, and then a couple more points I want to bring up before I go to my criticisms. I want to talk a little bit about the story without giving too much away, because there's a lot of things that I didn't expect in this film, and it's so great, but I also want to touch on the themes. Now, touching on the story, it's so much more than a revenge thriller. It's a story about belief, legacy, destiny, fate, and being beholden by it, love and hate, just to name a few. And then translating to the themes that we get in this film, it really highlights what it means to be a leader and following traditions and being a way of life without question and what that does to a person. So again, from the script and the themes that are highlighted so beautifully in this film, it's just so well woven. And it is tying all of that into Norse mythology and with the gods. And it is just so epic in the back battles that we get in this film. The action is top notch. It is extremely brutal and uncomfortable, especially when I mentioned earlier, there's this Viking raid that is just like breathtaking and very uncomfortable to watch at the same time. And it is just nothing short of masterful. So, and I can't leave out the third act, the battle, absolutely like edge your seat worthy. It was incredible to see. So let's talk about some of my criticisms that I have for the film here. And I have to, you know, I'm so glad that I read comics as a kid, you know, especially with Norse mythology, Thor and Odin and Loki. And I know a thing or two about Valhalla, Valhalla and, you know, Valkyries and all that stuff, especially playing God of War, uh, the first three games. I know a little bit about Norse mythology. And I read online when someone, you know, some people had saw like a couple weeks ago, and I saw someone say, you need like a Norse mythology encyclopedia to, you know, really take in this film. Now, I don't really agree with that. I don't think you need a PhD in Norse mythology to understand the narrative here, but I will warn casual moviegoers that it might not resonate with them in regards to, because this film does not, like throughout the film, the Norse mythology is heavily woven into this film. Like, again, the Odin, uh, Van Hala, uh, uh, Valkyries, it, it really dives deep into it. And I, and I really enjoy the element of the film, but I will warn those out there that maybe not be as familiar with the Norse mythology. It might be, they might, they might feel a little bit disattached to the story. Now, I personally think the film does a good job of balancing Norse mythology and the grounded nature of the story, but I just want to warn you all, it's a lot of Norse mythology in this film and it might throw some people off. But small little nitpick, I talked about it a little bit earlier. I'm a big fan of Willem Dafoe. I love Ethan Hawke. I wish they were more involved in the story just for personal reasons, but in particularly going to my criticisms, 
I appreciated the setup and I much more preferred the second and third act of the film. But I think the first half for me personally is the weakest element of the film because, again, I think and not just going to my selfish side of getting more of Ethan Hawks, but I wish that we got more time with that father and son relationship and just like not a whole 20 minutes. But I wish we got maybe one or two more scenes to really flesh out that relationship between that father and the son to really feel that journey of revenge that we get with the prince. But getting back into my thoughts on some of my criticisms here, there's a love story in this film, which I thought the performances were believable, but I just wished it was just, we could have spent more time developing that romance to really kind of make me engage in this emotional connection that we get towards the third act. And then last thing that comes to mind, there are some occasional slow moments in the film and it kind of slows down the momentum of the picture. And it, it's it's bits and pieces where it's a two, almost a two and a half hour film and you kind of feel that at points in the film. Again, I never was bored by it, but I was just like, yeah, I wish we can pick up the pacing just a little bit, just a couple times throughout the film. So those are really my main criticisms. Before I give you all my overall thoughts and my score on this film, I'll let you know if I think it's worth checking out. If you haven't already, make sure you liking the video, sharing the video, leaving your thoughts in the comments, and of course, subscribing to the channel. Overall, The Northman is a journey like no other. It's the storytelling of vengeance, and it is brutal. Robert Eggers does not hold your hand in telling this epic revenge Viking saga. Skarsgård has never been better, and Ian Taylor-Joy is phenomenal. Nothing can prepare you for this film. It is exceeded my expectations personally. I wish they would have shot this in IMAX because it would have been so beautiful to look at some of those scenes, but I really enjoyed this film. I'm going to give The Northman a 4.8 out of 5, and I'm just going to say this. I believe those who love the lore of Norse mythology and love a Viking tale, they're going to love this film, especially if you're a Robert Eggers fan. And the casual moviegoer, it might not work entirely. They might feel disconnected with some of the elements. But hey, I could be wrong of all accounts. And if I am, let me know your thoughts on this film in the comments. Again, your pros, cons, favorite moments, least favorite moments, your thoughts on the production, the performances, the Norse mythology. Did you not like the film? Let's talk about it all in the comments. If you stuck around to this point in the review, I appreciate you all. Again, just a friendly reminder before you leave to like the video, share the video, leave your thoughts in the comments, and of course, subscribe to the channel and hit that notification bell. That way you don't missing my other early movie reviews tv breakdowns and live streams hope you enjoyed this review hope you all are staying safe as you can see on the screen now subscribe to my channel check out my other content we'll catch you on the next video